What's up, welcome back to Nostalgia. Dave here with a review of The First Slam Dunk, new anime film. Well, new for the United States, just came out in release, but of course, it's actually the fifth highest grossing film uh, made in Japan ever, $263 million uh, all time, just came out in the United States. I think this is a very interesting anime film, one for that immense success that it's achieved in Japan and China primarily, and also the fact that this is a film to a very old uh, anime series from Toei, of course, you know, people know, uh, you know, classic anime producer, Toei's still kicking, but the 101 episodes of First Slam Dunk, the, or sorry, the 101 episodes of Slam Dunk, the anime series, that was released between 1993 and 1996, and they released a few movies during that time, but the First Slam Dunk is actually the f- franchise's first movie in almost 30 years, and on top of that, it's directed by Inu Takahito, the creator of Slam Dunk. So really cool to see a franchise kind of r- r- rise up from the ashes by its creator, nonetheless, and to find just such strong success for a sports anime. It's a show about a basketball team, you know? Pretty interesting. And shout out to a Japanese film, you know, Suzume uh, from Makoto Shinkai. That's the fourth highest grossing Japanese film ever, and that also came out this year. So, been a big year for Japanese film, and the first Slam Dunk actually won the Best Animation of the Year Award at the 2023 Japan Academy uh, Prize, beating out Suzume in the process. I don't think a lot of people would have seen that coming a year before, a year ago, you know? But, yeah, first Slam Dunk, it's a two-hour movie. I thought it was a bit long, but it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, kind of the structure, I think, stands out, where it's about uh, this one basketball game between two high school teams and there's a lot of flashbacks as we learn more about the characters on the team that like our protagonist is uh leading and i think what's interesting is you know i'm not i'm not i don't know slam dunk the series but from what i understand the protagonist of the first slam dunk ryoto who is this uh, undersized point guard Ryoto is not actually the protagonist of the series. The protagonist is actually one of the supporting characters in the movie. That would be uh, Sakuragi, the uh, the redhead, uh, like power forward character, new, brand new basketball player. It's very limited court time, but just kind of naturally gifted and athletic. It's interesting the movie's not based around the lead of the series, and that probably is very intriguing to fans of the series. I'd have to imagine, but um, yeah, we're kind of set in like modern times where a uh, Ryoto he uh. He's from Okinawa. He moves up uh, to the mainland, and he's undersized, but he's basically playing ball because his dead brother uh, was the one who had pushed him to play basketball. And his his dead brother was a prodigy, a great basketball player, and Roach is like struggling to live up to that legacy, and his family struggling to move on from this tragic death. Um, he's already lost his father as well, and it's interesting, kind of going back between the course of the game. And learning about Ryota's life. We eventually start to learn little bits about the other characters on the team, you know, the rest of the starting five. Uh, we don't learn quite nearly as much about them, though, as Ryota. They're still kind of cyphery. You know, we learn more about them through their relationship to Ryota, mainly. But through the, pro- the progress of the movie, I couldn't help but be really grabbed by Sakuragi, the redhead. He's kind of obviously positioned as like a Dennis Rodman type of character, both in terms of having dyed red hair. But also just the way he plays and acts on the court as this mega amazing rebounder, but also someone who is a bit manic as a figure and a personality. It must be really fun to see him as the lead of the series because that that was he's by far my my favorite character on the show, um, and it, for me like as a basketball fan, it's interesting watching a basketball anime because. It's fun watching the actual like basketball happen where you have this high school team get absolutely stifled and messed up by a basic trap from the opposing team. Like the opposing team is supposed to be like you know, like one of the best teams in their in the country and has like one of the best point guards, you know, for this age group. And yet their like vaunted defense is just like their ability to trap. And like this our our, our team, Rota and Sakuragi's team, they like can't pass out of a trap for like 10 possessions in a row. And like, I don't know, like a big basketball fan, that's like some basic level shit. I know they're high school players in the movie, but I was like, man, this is annoying basketball to watch, you know? And it goes kind of through uh, 
you know, a lot of similar sports movie beats where we end in a buzzer beater, you know, what team's going to win all that stuff. But Sakuragi's, I think, uh, uh, effect and importance to how they go about winning um, is probably the most enjoyable thing about it. I, I, I like the, the older coach they have and his coaching style. That was fun. Um, I think for me, I probably could have used the movie being a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit less flashback. If you're going to focus on just like the one game and kind of be like that leading up thing as we learn more about these characters and then by the time the game ends, you're really connected and invested. I'm down with it. I just think we probably could use a few less flashbacks. Just condense it just a little bit more. It probably hits a little bit harder. But very interesting that this is the movie that is the fifth highest grossing film of all time in Japan. Not like, you know, one of the uh, other anime movies that's come out recently. Not one of the One Piece movies. Not one of the Dragon Ball movies. Of course, Demon Slayer is the highest grossing Japanese film of all time. That's an anime. But yeah. Uh, it's just I just had a lot of fascination about like what this movie was and for me like I never like been a big sports anime guy but I have really fond distinct memories of watching like the Prince of Tennis being advertised on Toonami like seeing commercials for it. I was like oh wow that's a thing they have anime about sports and athletes interesting and obviously you know shows like Yuri on Ice about ice skating that was not really a sports anime but it's a, the athletics are involved you know that was something that Got a lot of love in the last decade, you know? Interesting that uh, that kind of subgenre can find some success. So shout out to First Slam Dunk. Uh, has, seems to have a very modest release here in the United States, but has been mega uh, in Asia. Really cool, unique story. Uh, shout out anime. And if you're an anime fan, of course, stay tuned because I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff about Studio Ghibli. Hayao Miyazaki's final film uh, is out now in Japan. I'll be covering it when it releases in the United States, and I'll be doing a complete Studio Ghibli ranking pod in a few weeks. So stay tuned for that. And let me know how you feel about the first slam dunk. What was your favorite part about it? And for more anime and movie reviews, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.